once you've run BET on the anatomical image, you're ready to use FEET, the fMRI expert analysis tool, which runs the remaining preprocessing steps. First, make sure you've opened up FSL from the sub-08 directory. Then click on the FEET button to open the FEET GUI. You'll notice that there are several tabs in this window, corresponding to different analysis steps. Since we want to focus only on preprocessing, click on the drop-down menu and select preprocessing. This will gray out the stats and post stats tabs, which we will learn about in a later chapter. The first step is to load the functional data. Here, we'll be analyzing each run of functional data separately. Click on Select 4D Data, and then click on the folder icon to select the first functional run in the func directory. When you click OK, you'll notice that some of the fields are filled in automatically. The TR and the total volumes in the data set are read from the image header. Make sure this matches up with the parameters you used to collect the data. If you aren't sure, ask your scan technician. The output directory will contain the results of the preprocessing. Let's call this run one. Leave the other options as they are. Again, ask your scan technician if there are any volumes at the beginning of the run that you need to discard due to higher signal intensity in the first few images. In some cases, the scanner will automatically discard them for you. Now, let's click on the Presats tab. There are several options here, but we're only going to focus on motion correction, slice timing correction, and spatial smoothing. High-pass filtering will be discussed when we get to modeling and statistics. And all you need to know about the BET Brain Extraction button here is that it does for the functional images what we did for the anatomical image. As you saw in the chapter on preprocessing, motion correction will undo any movements made by the subject during the scan. Slice timing correction is up to you. FSL's default is to not do it, and instead account for slice timing differences by including a temporal derivative, another concept that will be discussed in modeling and statistics. If you do decide to do slice time correction, ask your mom, I mean scan technician, what the ordering of the slices was. In general, it's best to leave the defaults as they are. The spatial smoothing kernel, however, is something you may want to change. In general, smoothing averages together signal and cancels out noise. And larger smoothing kernels can give you stronger signal. If you're looking at larger cortical regions, you may want to use a larger kernel, say around 6 millimeters or more. If instead you're more interested in smaller regions, such as the inferior frontal gyrus or the amygdala, you may want to use a smaller kernel to avoid averaging signal from functionally distinct areas. For now, I'll leave this as it is. The last processing tab is registration. Note that in the standard space field, a template brain has already been loaded, the MNI-152 brain. This is a good default to use, although you may want to change it if you're analyzing special populations, such as children. Remember that our goal is to warp or normalize the subject's anatomical image to the template. Click on the button next to Main Structural Image to expand it and see the input field. From here, if you click on the folder button, you should then select the brain extracted anatomical image, not the original one. The two drop down menus specify how much to search in order to set up a good initial alignment, and then how many degrees of freedom to use when registering and normalizing. The menus below the standard space field indicate the options to be used for normalizing the anatomical image to the template and the menus below the main structural image field indicate the options for registering the functional images to the anatomical. Note that registration has a BBR option, which stands for Brain Boundary Registration. This is a more advanced registration technique that uses the tissue boundaries to generate a better registration. The only downside is that it takes longer. These options are up to you, but for now, I'll set these to full search and 12 degrees of freedom for both. Later on, you'll do an exercise in which you'll change these options 
to see how they affect the results. Now click Go. This will open up an HTML page tracking the progress of the pre-processing steps. It may take around 5 to 10 minutes to finish. When one of the steps is completed, you'll see the output under the corresponding tab. We'll learn how to interpret this output in the next video.